When we hear about the drug ecstasy, it's often linked to the deaths of young people at parties. It didn't start out that way. In the 1970s, scientists thought the pure form of ecstasy, MDMA, had potential as a therapeutic drug. And now that idea is making a comeback with researchers, including a team in Vancouver. They believe the combination of psychotherapy and MDMA can make a dramatic difference in the treatment of people suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Here's Sophie Louie. We got shot at every day. 2003, the beginning of the war in Iraq. Nigel McCory from Asheville, North Carolina, was just 21 years old when he enlisted with the Marines. The very next year, he was deployed directly to the front lines. Every day, it was a fight to stay alive. When you're getting shot at, you always hear this little snap of the bullet. And then you hear a gunshot in the distance. Only months into his deployment, he started to feel the psychological effects of war. I remember feeling almost like disconnected from my body, this sense of kind of like feeling really numb and almost like my awareness was like almost like above me. But at the same time, it wasn't anything that kept me back from going on uh, patrols and I just kept doing my job, doing my job. It only got worse when he returned to the U.S. The trauma followed him back home. It, it stayed with me. And I eventually ended up having these really vivid nightmares that would just jar me out of sleep and I would be in a cold sweat. It would take seven years of suffering before Nigel was finally diagnosed with severe PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Seven years after being out and with the problems just getting worse and worse and then the effect that they were having on my life being more and more obvious and I was just becoming more and more isolated was becoming more and more paranoid. It's a familiar story for Dr. Ingrid Pacey. The Vancouver-based psychiatrist has worked with trauma survivors for almost 40 years, using both traditional and alternative therapies to help people suffering with PTSD. What is PTSD and how does it affect a patient's life? Essentially, the person's Normal coping defense mechanisms have been overwhelmed by either one or a series of overwhelming traumatic events. Pacey can sympathize. Her experience in a refugee camp after the Second World War motivated her to help trauma survivors. What have been the traditional therapies for someone with PTSD? They would be treated for anxiety. They would be given medication. While people were doing psychotherapy, there would be an attempt just through talk therapy to go back and see what it was in their early life that might have led them to be both too anxious or depressed. You know, the attempt was talk therapy. But with talk therapy, the person's fear starts to rise and they block. Nigel was experiencing this firsthand. Neither talk therapy nor the drug treatment he was prescribed were helping his quality of life. It was almost like I felt like I was getting a chemical lobotomy. PTSD in exchange for basically being a zombie, that's the way that the drugs made me feel. I would say it's not been a very successful route because we couldn't get past the defenses to really get to deal with what happened earlier. It's not to say that it never happened, but people would be in therapy for 10, 15 years. On Pacey's journey toward healing her own childhood trauma, she encountered a drug called MDMA, better known as ecstasy. And in a supervised session, she used it and discovered the drug's potential to break down psychological barriers. Somehow your body hangs on to anxiety. So I think as a small child, when I felt that, it's something that I no longer was aware of, but because of the relaxation with the MDMA, I could feel that, in fact, the war was over. There was nothing else to fear. MDMA, methylene dioxy methamphetamine, 
It's a synthetic drug considered to be a psychedelic substance made illegal in Canada in 1976. Today, most people know it as a drug used illicitly at parties and raves, but that wasn't its original purpose. It was never meant to be a party drug. It was developed for use in therapy because what it does is bring down anxiety and fear and increase a person's um, self-acceptance and it also makes trust come more quickly and having real trust in your therapist is really important in therapy. Pacey is part of an international group of researchers working on an experimental clinical trial using MDMA to assist psychotherapy for people with treatment-resistant PTSD. Canada was actually leading in psychedelic research several decades ago. In the 1950s, researchers in Weyburn, Saskatchewan were experimenting with the use of LSD in psychotherapy for patients with alcoholism and seeing promising results. So this study is the first of its kind for what, 40 years in Canada or in, so? In Canada, yes. Why has it been so long? It was made illegal. You know, once these substances hit the streets and everybody was taking them and having both wonderful but also very difficult experiences, governments clamped down. There was a complete shutdown of any of the work, both for therapy and also for research. We're doing a study in Vancouver that is looking at the effectiveness of MDMA-assisted psychotherapy with PTSD. Mark Hayden is the chair of the board of directors for MAPS in Vancouver. MAPS, the multidisciplinary association for psychedelic studies, is running the MDMA trials in the US and Canada. In 2008, MAPS began the difficult process to revive research into psychedelics in Canada. It was a journey of a thousand emails, going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. According to Health Canada, this is the first request to use MDMA in a clinical trial. They were concerned that this illegal substance would get out onto the streets. What were all the steps involved in getting this approved? We had a back and forth for about four years. It was an enormously difficult process. MAPS Canada had to get an import license to obtain the drug from Switzerland, where there was a legally produced supply. Did it seem ironic that it took so many years to import MDMA from Switzerland when you could probably get it around here fairly easily. Yes. And it also struck me as being ironic that we had to build a safe, a hidden safe in the second floor of a pharmacy in a bomb-proof room with motion detectors everywhere and multiple locks when you can actually buy the stuff on the street. And we're talking about a tablespoon. It's a tablespoon. That's what we had hidden in the safe. It was a tablespoon of MDMA. But the final approval would be historic. From 2009, when you got the OK, yeah. to what, what year was it when you finally had the MDMA here? It was 2013. So it was four years. Yes. You know, people were hoping that we would just drop the whole thing, but I guess we were persistent and really knew that this would be enormously helpful. But in the US, the MDMA research was already approved, and Nigel McCory was still struggling to get relief from conventional PTSD therapies. I was still in a really turbulent, emotional, and uh, mental place. And that's when I first heard about the MDMA-assisted psychotherapy to treat PTSD in veterans. At that point, I was, I was willing to do anything to improve my life. I thought I was going to be really just psychologically wrecked for the rest of my life. Next, fighting PTSD with ecstasy. So all these years that we have not been able to use this in that setting. Yeah. It could have saved lives. Absolutely. There were many difficult times for Nigel McCory in Iraq that contributed to his PTSD but one particular experience has stayed with him. It happened in the midst of an intense firefight. An unknown vehicle approached his platoon. 
I see this white truck coming through the desert. You know, at this point, you know, I'm in total survival mode. He signaled for the vehicle to stop multiple times. I'm thinking this has to be affiliated with this attack. He felt he was running out of time to make a decision. So I start shooting at the truck. I'd taken about eight shots at the passenger front side area of the truck. And I see a white flag being raised up. It's like, you know, a t-shirt, but it's white. International sign for a surrender, right? We go over there and it's just like, blood all over the seats. Hours later, Nigel learned who he had shot and killed. It was this uh, father and then his two young daughters. And they were like five and seven years old, something like that. He had to take their bodies and carry them on, on his shoulders across the desert to a hospital where they're pronounced dead. But so that, that blood that I was like looking at, it was these little girl's blood and, you know, those were my bullets that hit him. Those memories became nightmares for Nigel. For years, he endured sleepless nights, isolation and anxiety, until he finally enrolled in a clinical trial in South Carolina using MDMA, better known as the party drug ecstasy. Nigel agreed to share this video of one of his MDMA sessions. So any questions or concerns or thoughts on your mind before we start? Well, I hadn't been really anxious about this at all, but I think this morning it's starting to make me a little bit anxious. Once Nigel takes the MDMA, he will spend the rest of the day in the company of two trained therapists while he moves through an altered state created by the drug. Here in Canada, MDMA trials have been facilitated by psychiatrist Ingrid Pacey. She works with MAPS, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. What is happening in the brain when, when a person is on MDMA? There's a big release of serotonin, which gives you the, the very good feeling. But there's also um, a relief, release of oxytocin, which is what mothers have when the baby's first born. So that's the other thing that gives the good feeling and the sense of bonding. It takes between 20 and 90 minutes for the MDMA to start taking effect. I feel more relaxed. And then that last song that came on, all of a sudden, I found it more beautiful than the songs before it. MDMA is meant to assist psychotherapy, to facilitate conversations often too challenging to have without the aid of this drug. And so the MDMA lowers their defenses? It lowers particularly fear. And so they can approach this really difficult issue and talk about it without being so overwhelmed by feeling that there's no way to really process it. So I felt like I put my life in harm's way, really for nothing. Mm -hmm. I watched friends die really for nothing. Absolutely nothing, nothing good. Yeah. I don't feel like her freedom's been protected because of what I did. So Nigel, how are you feeling when you're talking about it? What are you noticing in your body? If anything? I mean, I guess I feel good talking about it, but I also feel like I shouldn't feel good talking about it. But my body feels more relaxed talking about it. Where the most profound effect for me was, was just the fact that I didn't feel the same 
hesitations to think about the traumatic events that I previously had. It was almost like I was curious to observe the traumatic events. During these hours of deep psychotherapy, Nigel is able to access memories he had trouble talking about before. My first instinct was maybe to try to run from it or sure. focus on other sure. things, but then I remembered what we talked about before the yeah. session. Great. I've really been trying to go through it rather than avoid it. Excellent. I felt this huge sense of relief after the session. Like, I remember leaving that session feeling like I had actually accomplished something, not knowing what, just feeling like I had actually accomplished something. And that night, I slept great. I mean, it, it was emotionally really hard doing this work. It's, it's not ecstasy. You're sitting there and you're focusing on the most traumatic experiences you've ever been through and the drugs helping you stay with it, but it's not, it's not a pleasant, pleasurable experience, you know? Two months after his five MDMA sessions concluded, Nigel no longer had measurable PTSD. Before I did the MDMA treatment, like I felt really helpless if I was plotting the quality of my life over time, that since I'd been back from my Iraq, it was just steadily going down. And then the MDMA therapy on that same plot was a turning point where after that, my quality of life just kept going up. And the chair of the board of MAPS Canada, which is the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. Mark Hayden with MAPS in Vancouver says this treatment is critical for people like Nigel. Data from recent conflicts has shown that mental health conditions are a bigger threat to soldiers than combat itself. Can MDMA save lives? Absolutely. More, more, more soldiers have ki killed themselves from suicide in the United States than have died on the battlefield. And those are, those are deaths that could have been prevented. If they'd had access to MDMA? Yeah, absolutely. Well, MDMA-assisted psychotherapy. So all these years that we have not been able to use this mm -hmm. in that setting, yeah. it could have saved lives. Absolutely. Whether mainstream institutions like the Canadian military will accept this research will be a major test for MAPS. Morning, Colonel. But so far, the forces say they have no problem with the fact that this potential treatment involves an illicit drug. There is a stigma, but I think that's a mistake. I think that um, what we have to think about, there's no such thing as an illicit drug. You know, there's illicit use of drugs. Colonel Rakesh Jetley is the chief psychiatrist for the Canadian Armed Forces. This research holds promise if the studies are replicated, if they're published, if the, you know, the, the safety, efficacy, all of those are shown, then it can be just another tool in the toolbox for us, for people that um, you know, are having difficulties with the conventional treatments. More research, including a phase three clinical trial, which will include a larger group of research subjects, is needed before the researchers can apply to have the drug approved. What's been lost in all of these years uh, that we have not been doing research into MDMA and psychotherapy? I think it's been a big tragedy, because if, if you actually look back to the work done then, the, the evidence is all there. You know, there were 40 years when, you know, the research could have been completed. We would have had very clear indications of when to use it, how to use it, what kind of follow-up to um, give people. And we're going to be recruiting, hopefully, military combat veterans. But even as Mark Hayden plots the future for this therapy, navigating bureaucratic hurdles and the stigma of this illicit drug, there is another uphill battle. A phase three clinical trial in Vancouver will cost us about $1.5 million. The psychedelics, the traditional ones, can't be patented by a large pharmaceutical company, and, and, and so if you can't patent it, they're not going to make a huge amount of money, and that doesn't help. So there's no money to promote the research. With this, so this population of soldiers, this has worked exactly in this way. Despite the financial challenges, Mark Hayden is optimistic the research will pan out. I think it's safe to predict that we will actually have MDMA as a legal prescription medicine in about 2021. 
how critical do you think it is that we have this tool, this MDMA to Well, I, I want to say that it's very critical because we don't have enough to offer. Um, and there are a lot of war veterans out there that are really suffering and other trauma survivors. Police, you know, women and men with childhood trauma. Between the sexual abuse and the war, it is an epidemic. Might have to tune a bit. Three years after Nigel's treatment, he says he continues to improve. It's been this continual process of feeling more and more removed from that harmful situation, that dangerous situation. 2015, I went with friends to go downtown Asheville on 4th of July. And this was the first 4th of July since I had been back from Iraq, where I could watch the fireworks. And it didn't put me in this heightened state of just like wanting to run home and like stay up all night with you know these paranoid thoughts like somebody was gonna come to my house like I was in a war zone. To the point now, I can say, like I feel cured of my PTSD. That is our broadcast for tonight. A reminder, you can always connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter or at globalnews.ca slash 16 by 9. I'm Donna Friesen, and from all of us here at 16 by 9, thanks for watching.